Yeah, dude, uh, we'll fucking get her going. I guess this would be uh, episode number four with uh, my boy Jared. What's going on, Jared? What's going on, dude? Fuck all, man. Happy to have, uh, happy to be here, man. Yeah, dude, it's good to have you. I haven't seen you. Um, trying to think. Last time I saw you was probably at like some random party or something, or at the bar or something. Some spike, some spike yeah. night or some probably. Random shit. Typical trans going on. Uh, but I first met you was uh, Hatcher, man. Oh, the Harold Hatcher days. Yeah, yeah, I remember. That's a real thing. Well, I remember actually you getting dropped off in the uh, Haven van. That was a like thing. That, that back was in the a day. real thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was fucking tight, man. And um, I remember I always thought it was so cool, and like my fucking sister, she was, she was always so sus about it. She was like, "You can't be dropping to get a real car." And I'm just thinking, oh, like, dude, yeah. this is this is the car, man. This is the fucking yeah. shit. Well, at the time too, it was like. It was spray painted and it had like a sick design on it, and you probably didn't like fully understand what it oh, was. I had no idea. Yeah, so you were just like, man, this thing looks sick. Yeah, like, I had no fuck idea. It. Did he kind of like try and keep it away from you guys? Like when you were young, obviously, but then um, he was open about it going up or what? Oh, yeah, it was pretty chill. Like I'm trying to think, like, like we never talked about, I guess, like what was sold in the store, like what it was for. Yeah. You yeah. know, but like, I, like for sure, middle school, like. Yeah, because that's when, like, I, I started smoking, I guess, so, like... Yeah. I don't... But, yeah, he was pretty open about it, I would yeah. say so. Oh, he was you pretty know? chill. Like, he was... Well, he, oh, I, I just remember always thinking, yeah, if you want to, you know, try something or whatever, you know, come to me first kind of a thing. I was like, yeah. okay, that's cool. Because he wanted cool. you to be safe, man. Yeah. And, I, like, he doesn't mean, obviously, like, fucking, like, crazy hard shit. He, he yeah, yeah, like, he doesn't shrooms. mean any harm. Yeah, 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 no, he just meant, like, I think, like, shrooms or, like... Yeah, I remember asking him for weed for the first time, too. That was, uh... Yeah. That was funny. But aside that shit, man, um, when did you first start, like, getting into music? Ooh. Was your dad, like, an influence in that? Oh, is he a musician? No, he's oh, not. Okay. No, not a musician. But he's no. a music lover. Oh, yeah, he loves his... Uh, well, man, I, like, vividest, vividest memories. You know, you get those weird-ass fucking uh, memories when you're a kid, hey? Yeah, just random, like... Yeah, yeah cause yeah. Like, I get always, those all the time. He was always, like, rolling around doing his, doing his shit, and I just always remember, man... Fucking driving, listening to Montley Crew all the okay. time. Okay, that was like your childhood band kind of thing. Oh, for sure. And then like that's what, like that's what made me want to do music. I was like, this is like I, he got me DVDs and I would watch like their concerts with chicks fucking flashing their tits. Yeah, dude, their live shows were oh, insane. And I was like, dude, this. Yeah, being this a kid is seeing real. that, you're like, this is the life. This, this is, is so high. Like, yeah. yeah. And their music's really high energy, so like you get amped like listening to oh, it already. And it was. Yeah, I remember that. So he influenced me. He bought my first guitar. He bought like my first like book. I was in lessons at like seven years old. I think. Yeah, I was gonna say that was Eight, another maybe? question. How old were you when you got your first instrument? Mm, yeah, I, I would say probably five. Okay, five or six. And it was a guitar. Yeah, yeah, dude. Because I remember we were in Hatcher, so we would have been like, what, I think I'm what like ten or younger. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And you played at one of the talent shows. Or it wasn't Crew. even like a talent show. Like you just I played, played at and a Guns fucking Roses, yeah. assembly or something. And I was like, man, this kid's like a year younger than me and he rips and has a passion for music. Like that's something, you know? And growing up around music, I always appreciated shit like that. Yeah, I, I, I do remember that too, actually. Like that was pretty. Yeah, yeah. You Well, you did like, it was kind of a mix of like Motley Crue and then you threw the smoke on the water riff in there and you kind of like transitioned a bunch of shit yeah, yeah. but it was like a jam it was like one consecutive like jam at the end of the assembly and then like it was yeah, the that, perfect like ender you know that was cool i actually a funny story about that because that like that all got me into music was the like motley crew and like just my dad getting me an instrument and like i remember showing me how to like air guitar and stuff like that like oh yeah you guys would rock out yeah. together and jam <laughs> yeah. out together no you're not doing it right man no anyway and yeah. then uh Actually, performing at Harold Hatcher is what made me quit, like, because I stopped playing guitar for probably, like, five years. Okay. Or, like, close to a four or five years was, like, I put, I remember so vividly, played at Harold Hatcher, it was, like, Guns N' Roses, okay? And then, uh, I guess I knocked my guitar down before I went and played, and I didn't think, because, like, I never used to tune my instrument, like, the music teacher would help okay, me or something yeah, would help yeah. me, and I did, and th I was in grade five, so you had been graduated already, yep, so you would yep. have seen this. And then I, I did it, I went up and I played, and it was all out of tune. Oh, And I was so, and I played the whole song, because I, like, I didn't know, like, man, I'm fucking in You didn't five. realize at first, and then you, like, you kept playing. Oh, I realized it, but I was like, I don't know, how, like, do I just stop? 
just stop and start tuning. Like, yeah, no. Yeah, so I yeah. just played the whole song. I didn't even stay for like the claps after. Just got right off, and I was yeah. like, I didn't play guitar for you. Like, and at that age, you were probably that. so unprepared for something oh, like that man. to happen. And, yeah, and it was like it was it was it was. I don't know. It's funny now. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Funny. It's funny when you look back on it. But that would have been like the second or maybe even third time you played at Hatcher, so you were already probably a little bit comfortable doing it. Yeah. And then that happened, and, and you were like, like, oh. You realized you shouldn't have gotten too comfortable. Yeah, probably, that was eh? that was a that was a that was a dream shatter for a quick for a quick bit. But you know what? It was all it all ended up working out because I stopped playing guitar. I transitioned to drums. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, I don't know. How long did you play drums for? Drums. I did. Well, I did it hard for probably like the four years that I didn't. Oh, okay. Uh, that I didn't play guitar, and yeah. then uh, and then so when I kind of finally got back into guitar, which is another crazy story how I even got back into guitar, but. I did, so I stopped the guitar, did the drums, and then I p- picked them both back up and started consistently playing both of them probably since, like, grade 10. Okay, and you so always like, had, like, a set and, like, a guitar. And, like, yeah, except I had to just get rid of my uh, drum set. Recently? Uh, yeah, when we moved. We moved to Selkirk, and this house was too small. Damn. And then, well, now I got no room for it upstairs at Hemp now, so. Yeah, and that was your first uh, your first kit, so you were probably heartbroken, eh? Oh, no, actually, I had a few kits. I had okay, few. I had tough. one. Actually, it wasn't really mine. My dad just got it, and, like, he had it in, like, one of, I don't know, one of the spaces he had, and then yeah. we got rid of it, but then, like, it when I started really playing, yeah, like, I had that kit for, like, man, I went to Long McQuaid, it was, like... An old used kit, but oh, yeah, like, yeah. bro, this thing was like all the drums and cymbals you can imagine. So I oh, was just it was like, like a full. It kit. was a full kit, bro, and I was just used to you know your normal five piece with yeah, yeah. cymbals. No man, this thing was like mean, and I was like, yeah, you were hyped. This is the shit. Yeah, I was like Damn. listening to Motley Crue for the first time. I was like, what? This is real? Yeah, no, it was pretty fun. So, at what age did you realize Tommy Lee sucked? Oh, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. I can't. I can't speak about my boy like that. Yeah, no, but I'm joking. He's fucking rad, dude. He, he's a, he's a. I've, I've had beers with him actually, but at the. Uh, That's pretty sick. Motley Crue backstage when they came for their final tour. Okay, yeah, I feel like because you were a fan your whole life, whenever they come, you see them. Oh yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. When that. Final and you guys tour... like you you do the investment to get the VIP and like. No no no! It, well, it was a so. At first, when they announced the final tour, I was like, "This is the fu- this is the last time I'm gonna be able to see them." Fuck it. They weren't even had Winnipeg on their day. We went to Minnesota. Okay. And then Sick. yeah, we went to Minnesota, made a weekend of it. It was awesome. We had a great time. How old were you at the time? Uh, that would have been like I want to say grade ten, so like sixteen. Okay, maybe, so. 16, 17 at most. But anyway, so we did that, and then come back two weeks later, they announced their mo- or their Winnipeg date. I'm like, well, so did you go and see them again? I was like, of yeah, course. it looks like yeah. we're seeing them again. But this time I went with my buddy who, and he actually records with Tommy Lee in LA. Nice. So I guess he knows them pretty well, and yeah, we got to go chill and. Uh, that that must have been probably like a pretty big thing for you, man. Oh, dude, I yeah. was like, you're shook. Oh fuck yeah, I was pretty yeah. juiced. So like, I mean, I still do remember it, but like, I remember just trying to crack like i didn't say a whole hell of a lot but like i remember when i was trying to say something i was like i gotta make it worthwhile yeah like, you want to make him either laugh I wanted to be or be a like, funny this guy. guy's cool yeah, or like, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i just yeah i made jokes about like hey man you guys need a fucking like a coffee you know someone to make coffee man i make a wicked cup of brew bro yeah yeah just, like, that's sick he thought it was funny and we were just yeah well it's it probably like that too because um they like seeing the younger generations getting into that shit. Oh, yeah. well, especially with the dirt that just came out, like the movie. Oh yeah, that exposed oh. it to a whole lot of people, man. I'm I don't know some I've talked to like some original fans and they like, well, like original I guess like older fans and they're yeah. just like, oh, it's not what it used to be. And I'm just like, it. It doesn't it, matter. It, it, they're just doing what they're doing, man. Like they they can't like the new songs that came out with. They're still like they're fucking hard rock, man. Yeah. I want to. Uh, like, if Kiss keeps going for this final Kiss tour, I want to go see them somewhere. Because I saw them once when they Kiss came tour, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what they're calling their last tour, the final Kiss. Or oh, really? Something like that, yeah. Oh, okay, that's kind or of cool. Or the last actually. Kiss, yeah. Something like that. It was pretty cool. Um, their show here was pretty rad. I've never seen Kiss. I've never seen Kiss, actually. That's like the one, like... Yeah, Rage and Kiss are my two favorite, like... Oh, yeah? Of all time. Oh, I, I didn't I didn't know that, actually. Yeah. yeah. No, Crew... I would say Crew, like, takes a spot, hands down, but I love... Well, man, Netflix. Kiss, for me, is probably what Crew is for you, because Kiss was my dad's Oh, shit. okay. You know? yeah, 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 So it's kind of like, that's mm-hmm. what we had. 
Yeah, it was weird actually, because like I always thought Crew was like my dad's favorite band, and then like I grow up and I realize it's Leonard Skinner. I'm like, yeah, that's what? that's the same too. My dad's favorite is fucking either uh, Tom Petty or, or yeah, a, Tom Petty. Yeah, yeah that's for sure, a good Tom one. Petty. But I was always like Motley Crue, Leonard Skinner. Like it's pretty different. Yeah. Like, but Leonard Skinner's badass too, man. I yeah. like Leonard Skinner for sure, man. Teen, would you say like prior to that your only real hobby was like music like that was the shit you were doing playing and like yeah pretty much i would say pretty much like i've done like little things here and there like i mean like i did like like i mean as a kid like ho- like hockey oh yeah I did you were ho- big in hockey for actually a while, yeah man i was well i was thinking like archery and swimming lessons but man then, i remember seeing you walking around murdoch even with your fucking yeah. shit on game days yeah. yeah when did you uh first start getting into hockey Hockey was that was always a heartbreaker actually because like hockey like music was always cool and everything but like like for me I loved it but it was like, like your your main like passion it was really. but like all like all the cool kids played hockey oh okay. like I was never able to play hockey until like until like like I don't know I think I was thirteen or something or twelve and at that age would you say it kind of like took over your hobbies because you wanted. To have that like cool yeah i wanted to thing. yeah i wanted to be a hockey player so yeah and that, that did kind of distract me i guess from that and that's when i started taking drums so okay. I, I dropped guitar as a whole and then yeah i actually forgot about that but then yeah i kind of started playing hockey and then drums and shit yeah so and, ho- playing hockey and drumming were your two like things yeah at that time yeah so mm-hmm. that was cool hockey was dope though like fucking I, yeah what, what position did you usually play goalie Oh yeah, you yeah. and Blake, man. Me and Landry, yeah, yeah. Man, the Blake, dynamic duo. I uh, I think I still have it at my mom's. The jacket that Blake got the year that he made the fucking save. Oh man! In the shootout, he made man. He was honestly a fucking. He was a tight goalie. He was yeah, really dude. good actually. Shout out, big shout out, Blake, man. Yeah, big shout out. No kidding. Um, like our hockey team was just a gong show. Like yeah, man, I it remember, wasn't like super serious oh. kind of thing. Like, for the talent we had on the team, like, you look back at it, you're like, we should have just fucking smartened up for a bit. Like Yeah, you guys could have thrown down. Oh, dude, we were, like, smoking doobies and shit before practice, before games. Like, no one's fucking giving a fuck about anything. Everyone's, no one's worried. Well, you're in that age where you're, like, experimenting with shit and you're getting into all of that, you know? Well, because I guess Murdoch, like, I wasn't with them when they won championships, but they won the championships the one year, and then I I was on the team the next year. Next, yeah. So I guess like everyone's like, "Oh, we're champions!" Like, and then when people start smoking weed, no one gives a fuck. And I guess that's kind of when you got your like hi- like real hype back for hockey, and you're like, "Oh, dude, like, I'm gonna play for the Murdoch." Like, oh yeah, like because of Wah. But you were, was, were you still playing on other teams before that? I was, but I was never playing in Transcona. I never okay. played hockey. I, I always... Who did you play for? I was always like Gateway River East, so I always versed my friends. But oh, yeah, because you never, were always living out there. Exactly. Kind of yeah. I never got to play with them, though. Which was like shitty for a goalie, because fuck, man. You want to like, see how good they actually are. Well, All it, your buddies at school. It's like, and, like you either you win and you... I mean, people don't usually say much when, about the goalie when they get a win, or you lose yeah. and you lost the game for your team because i remember we yeah, lost you kind of get the whole oh, like, package it, thrown at you oh yeah because it's like and we got killed once like chase anderson scored like two or three goals on me like my buddies are just popping them in we're getting fucking lit up yeah we get go to school the next day and i'm just like oh. what happened yeah <laughs> oh man that's funny dude um when did you like stop playing hockey well i, so, well, I mean i i I guess in a league, like, well, no, that's a lie. I was going to say Murdoch, but we did beer league after. Okay. And, like, oh, again, I fucked that up. Both playoffs, I fucked up for us. Unintentionally. Well, it was beer league, so were you, like, too hammered? Uh, oh, I was getting lit, yeah, but, like, not not in that sense, but, like, both years' playoffs, the first year, what happened? Um, I, oh, yeah, my girlfriend's graduation, so I, I couldn't make the game. And it was only, like, semifinals, quarterfinals. And okay. we were killing every team, like, it was, like, Hands down, we we're going to win. Gonna and this was with Beer League. Beer League, okay. but it was still yeah, like yeah. we were taking it as, as serious as you can get for Beer League. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's still your buddies and like. Oh, yeah. You know, and yeah. We, we, we were dominating everyone. So we're like, oh, this is going to be an easy championship. Get my friend to go play for me in the game. I told him 9 o'clock p.m. I fucking accidentally put 9 instead of a 6. So 6 o'clock. So I told him the game's at 9. It's actually at 6 o'clock. I'm getting oh. I'm getting phone calls from everyone on the team. Where dude, are it's five thirty. Where, where the you? fuck where the fuck are you? I'm like, dude, I guys told you I'm not playing. Jesse Tobacco will be there. So I'm trying to get a hold of Jesse and he's like I'm like, What are you doing, man? Are you at the game? He's like, No, I'm eating. What the f- what do you mean? I'm like, 
the game's in half an hour. And then he's like, you told me nine. And I looked at my text messages. And I'm like, oh, yeah, boys, I fucked this one. We went to four for the game, and that was it. No way. Yeah. And then the next year, it was something stupid like that. Oh, yeah, I went on a trip. And then I couldn't make the game, and we had to forfeit again two years in a row. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Well, the trip was priorly booked, but we didn't really take into consideration the playoffs. So then I was, and we couldn't find a goalie. Yeah. So that, and then like after that, yeah, basically I haven't really played too much hockey since then. Well, yeah, I was gonna say, was that kind of like the ender where you're just like, yeah, fuck it. Well, yeah, I was kind of like fuck it because most of the time, like, man, like I'd want to go to the games, but sometimes I wouldn't, and I was so half yeah. into it. I, I don't know, maybe it was because I never had to pay. Which Do you was, still watch hockey and, like, pay attention to, like, the culture and, like, everything going uh, on? I mean, I guess I follow some, like, like maybe, I don't know if they're meme accounts, but I follow, like, funny, like, Barstool Hockey or oh, whatever, like, like Barstool yeah, Sports. Yeah, course, and, like, kind of, of that bullshit, but, like, I mean, Canucks are my favorite team still. But. So you watch their games? Yeah, if it's on if and you're it's, in the room. Yeah, if it's on, I'm in the room. Like, I'm not going out of my way to, to yeah. watch it. But, like, even the Jets games, like, I don't mind, like, going to a buddy's house and just, you know, Yeah, yeah, throw or if somebody, like, invites game. you to a game, yeah. like, why not? But, you know what? I, I will say, one, I don't know if you've ever done fantasy hockey. Like, you pick your No, player. but I got one buddy that's, like, really into fantasy, I, like, everything. I get into that. Like, yeah? I did fantasy this year, and, like, I was... Well, shitty because like fucking season's not ending but yeah yeah man i was getting into it like every day That's checking it. stats and shit yeah yeah man. you were like it was becoming your new thing again. oh yeah bro i was like man this is this is good i drafted a good team this year yeah uh after you were done like with the whole hockey thing what did you like really do were you kind of just doing music and like it was weird hanging? man like honestly like i'm trying to think like so I did music, kind of, well, I guess I graduated, and then I was just working at Hemp Haven, right? So I just, yeah, I, feel, I just started being, like, just lazy as fuck, I think, and, like, I was just smoking, like, really, most of the time. Okay, so smoking weed was probably, like... That was number one, but then uh, I would say within the past, like, year and a half, like, I've just, I don't know, I'm, I gotta stop fucking wasting my the time and talent while I have it. Yeah. So now I'm trying to get, like... I'm trying to get shit going back on. With well, you the, just did a cleanse for how long, you said? Well, it was a month. I was, I saw, I guess I was sober for a month. Yeah, yeah. So. A little tea break. Yeah, a little tea break gets you going on. I mean, I got the Budweiser going on right now. Yeah. So that's some good shit. But, uh, yeah, I took a month off and kind of, I guess, well, the combination of that and then moving, because I've never lived by myself before, right? Yeah, true. So, like, I started... Learning that, how to fucking maintain everything. Yeah, and well, and I started, like, being, I guess, a month sober for, uh when I moved too so it was just yeah. a, a whole bunch of new shit so I th- I feel like I'm like kind of like everyone's like oh 2020 is the worst year to get your shit together I'm like it could be the best man you got all this free time like, and you're you, isolated yeah you I know? mean you, like there's what what more can you do besides work on yourself and, yeah you can you spend know? some time in your head you know do some spring cleaning <laughs> yeah some spring cleaning yeah, shout man. out Mac Miller man that's a good fucking song it's a lyric from the Mac song man I just seen an interview of him fucking He's a legendary It's trippy guy, looking man. back on that because we were how old when him and Wiz and Currency and all those guys started blowing up. We were probably like... like I think 2012, wasn't it? Yeah, we were like, like grade what? 7. Grade, or you were probably in grade 6. I was yeah. probably grade 7. Maybe it was even the year before that. And like... Because that's 8 years ago. Think about that. Yeah, dude. That's all, a long but, time ago. Man, think about how quick that happened. Though. That whole wave of music came in. And everybody was listening to this like happy go lucky stoner rap. Yeah, it for, was like good years. Sh- it was good shit though. Yeah, like, yeah. Go to high school. Fuck yeah. I miss living in Tikona. Did you like have much of like a hip hop phase at all, or anything with? Any I've had. Well, actually, it's. Um, I've gotten into a few artists. Like, yep. you know what I mean. But like, I'll always, I'll always have like rock and shit going on. But of like, of course, yeah. For like, I, I think I've got like a good staple of artists for rappers that I variety. Yeah, good variety. So like, I don't know. My favorite all time probably is Dizzy Wright. Really? I would. Honestly, Hotel Stripper is a banger of a song. That's a good one. But man, he's got like, yeah, fuck, man. This kill one, him with kindness. Have you heard Flatline? I might have. I, I fucked with him for like two years solid and he was like one of my favorite rappers. Man, that's a fucking like he's got lots of tunes that are just like bro, there's stories like Flatline. It's about yeah. the movie Flatline. I don't that, know if you've seen that movie. I don't think so. It's basically just about these scientists who um, they're trying to like they're basically they're going in after hours. They're stopping their heart to experience the afterlife. And, oh, then, and then bringing and, bring back. and bringing them back. Trippy. It's true. That's a crazy concept, man. man. It it. I'm telling you. Is it not, an older movie? They. It was an older movie, and then they redid it in okay. 2018. And which one's better? 
I haven't seen the old one, but I seen the new one, and the new one was fucking good. I out feel of, like the out old of ten, one, what do you give it? Like I would give it like an eight at least, nine. Like, oh, I, three, I think like, it would be a nine. No, it would be it was like a solid nine. Yeah, like because when I try and think of something that bothered me about the storyline, like nothing really did. Like even the okay. ending, the ending didn't piss me off. Like it was a like it was just like wow, what what if this actually happened? Yeah, because these side yeah they stop your heart and they bring you and but it's like their demons come and try and like fuck with them after they've been make it kind of like corrupt yeah it's it's you gotta watch it but the, anyways dizzy Wright does a, like a song about that and okay. like that's the shit i like man i like like the rap songs like kid cuddy i fucking love kid cuddy too. so good ton of just like it's again relatable shit and just like yeah man it, oh, i want to do a kid cuddy cover like i really like it's gonna happen like ooh man and i could see definitely with your like style being able to pull that off just put in some like you know effects pedals and shit that's all you really yeah. need because like man you can make some crazy sound like with that amp simulating like software i bought like dude it's fucking it's like the sky is the limit man you got like fucking for sure oh my god what was it that made you get into uh recording your music and stuff like that um well i don't know i was always like i've always wanted to do covers i know like before i've done like just i post like 10 second 15 second clips on instagram and shit and i always thought it'd be, i'd always be like oh this is so cool and stuff yeah and then I, w- I would always just and i'd love playing in front of people but i would always just i don't know i think i'm if i was like camera shy when i smoke but like i would smoke so much i just wouldn't want to record it yeah yeah so then like once i had like some time to fucking you know i guess figure my shit shit out and i was like no nah, i really should actually do this and then i started man it was almost like getting back into graphics class dude learning oh, yeah. how to video edit fucking yeah, do the photoshop enough. and uh man big shout out mr mac big shout out yeah, to mr coolest mac fucking graphics he was teacher ever man i started working with the guy at, at henderson a bit there and opened yeah. the guitar okay and like that was pretty cool man like just being able to pick that guy because he was the guitarist for the guess who i guess not for a long time but like for like i don't my know my dad like, probably knows four. him then oh probably yeah like he He's pretty... What's legit. his name? Uh, Brian? Oh, yeah, my dog. <laughs> Definitely would know him. Yeah, he was... Uh, but, man, picking that guy's brain, like, because I would go on there Fridays, work for a few hours, and just... Just hang. Hang and, out, like, like, help him out with what he, he needs help with, and he'd help me out with what I need help with, and then... Uh, yeah, for sure. Man, just the stories from this guy, though, I'd be, mean, like, asking him, like, what's your craziest performance? And he'd, like... Some crazy. Yeah, you got stories you can like pass oh, on. Let's hear. Yeah. Let's hear one if you can remember a good well, the, one. One of the cool ones that I thought was like I was asking him like, what was your most like exciting show? I asked him and he was like, well, Leonard Skinner just got off the stage and um, we had to follow them up, which we weren't too excited for. But then like, mm, yeah, and I'm like, yeah. oh my god, you guys were following fucking Leonard Skinner. Yeah, Jesus still, Christ. how do you like follow up that act? Yeah, you know? and he's like, well, it was perfect, man. Like. We did our set, and then it went well. The crowd was, I guess, they were just, like, roaring for them to come back on. And then it started raining. And he's like, it was like, we went back for our encore, and it started raining, and everyone was just losing their minds. Like, okay. We basically, he's, he's like, we almost, like, outdid, I guess, Leonard Skinner in this one area that they were in. Yeah. And it was like, man, that's pretty dope, like, to out. Yeah, the feeling that you would oh. have, you know. Yeah, that, that would be pretty cool. That was another one. And then, like, he's met Slash a bunch of times, so... He's got cool stories. About yeah, for that sure, attitude. for sure. That was cool. Um, as far as you and shows, what was your favorite like performance that you've done? Done? Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. The only actual like concert I've done was with Nathan with Rain oh, and yeah. Shine when we did our Battle of the Bands. And I'm for- pretty sure I mixed that actually because my dad used to mix a lot of those. Mm-hmm. And I know you you definitely saw my dad at them. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I saw you guys at one of them, and it might have been that one because I. I think i remember seeing you there like that was for me like that's the only like concert i guess i've done which for me it was pretty interesting like i don't know nathan if you remember like the the bass drum and the actual kick bass they were they moved apart yeah they were wobbling or something wasn't it yeah because i put my own double kick in there Mm -hmm. and i guess i didn't fasten it down good enough so like what as i'm kicking because i'm putting pressure on it's the whole drum's moving so i'm like at, oh. at some point i'm like fucking stretching and I have to call the guy in i'm like this is fucked like this is not working out and yeah. he's like working in it and i'm like playing the rest of the song and i think it took like a whole song before it it, it was back to normal work. and stuff yeah but it was fine but i was like man that's having the my fact that you like, like worked through it it's like very significant for you because you were able to like adapt to it like you know and still have it sound good yeah like. it was all right i just remember my heart racing so much but other than yeah. that like i don't know i did like the talent show at murdoch was pretty hype i did yeah it was, 
other than that, I don't really have... I don't know. I want to get into live performing, but I haven't done a lot of it yet. But I do remember the Murdoch show was kind of... It was fun because I've never played two guitars in one song. Like, I did the, the beginning, like, the first, like, three minutes was, like, an acoustic guitar. And I had, like, an overdrive pedal, so it sounded okay. rock and roll still. Yeah. Because the begin it was weird. It was the beginning was acoustic, and then it's like a light rock, and then at the end it's a whole another tuned guitar. It's an open tuning. So I did those two parts on the one acoustic, and then like there's like a five seconds in the song where I have enough time to put this guitar down, grab another one, put it back on, and get into the song. And I did it, and I went in it as soon as you put the second guitar, and it just goes into the solo. So oh. I remember like that was a pretty cool feeling. And it was like it was such a clean transition like you really felt it at yeah, the time. Yeah, I felt pretty cool about that. But other than that, I don't really have too much okay. live performance gigs. Are you like open to trying to find a new band or like something to get into live performing? That's kind of what the whole YouTube cover I guess venture has been about. Like I'm just been okay. trying to like well, first I want to get my shit together with recording because I'm learning how to record by just doing this. I've never recorded before. Yeah. So me doing this like even though there are other people's tunes, like I'm still learning like how to do it, like how to get your effects the, right. And well, all. covers and stuff like that is definitely a great like intro to recording, you know. Yeah, so I just figured that that'd be a good way to get into it. But yeah, and then once I've you know done covers, people can see like what kind of music I like and what kind of style I'm into. Yeah, and so that's kind of my hope, anyways. You know, after I put some shit out, you know, maybe get it out there to a few people, get some. You know, Man, you should plug your uh, YouTube and Instagram and everything so everybody knows like what to search up oh yeah well fucking it's just that um, the youtube and instagram are both at jared lowen and uh well at starting tomorrow i just finally got my format you know all down pat and did the photoshop and everything but mondays uh 7 30 we're gonna be doing covers every monday and then i want to do live stream every wednesday okay sick. so and you're gonna be live streaming on uh, instagram or youtube as well uh, Instagram, I didn't, I don't really know how to, see, I'm still learning. You I gotta didn't, set up. Yeah, yeah okay, I didn't, I didn't okay. even know you could do the YouTube streaming. But, um, yeah, no, I just want to do that. And then, like, last week I was live streaming, I had, like, Nick Mortson, he came on. Oh, that's cool. That was pretty, it was interesting, because we were trying to jam over, like, live stream. Oh, like, you let him join your live stream. Yeah, he was on the live, like, we were on, oh, I was on cool, one end, cool. he was on the other. And we had to plug our headphones in, yeah. so I could still hear him. But then we had like around crank and we were tripping. Nice. It was it, like parts were good, parts were bad because sometimes when it gets choppy. But it's all fun, man. It was fun. It was yeah. fun. It was diff. It was definitely different. It was a new experience. Man, you know who I'm actually really looking forward to having on the podcast? Uh, Ryan Roxy agreed to come on when he comes to town with Alice Cooper. Are you serious, dude? Yeah. You want to know some weird ass shit, man? I, really? Yeah. That's like I was, so I was talking to him on Instagram weird. and he said he's down. Are you serious, dude? Okay, yeah. like I was on when I posted one of my covers. He, like, it's not a lot, but, like, I just see who, like, can view my stories. Yep. He viewed one of my stories. That's the thing and with I, me, too. And I just, I was like, that's weird. So, at first, I was like, oh, it's got to be a spam account, obviously. And I clicked, verified. The, I clicked the name. Yeah. It's verified. And so, I messaged him because I actually had met Ryan Roxy when I went to go see Motley Crue Yeah, man, he's fucking rad. He's played with a lot of sick bands, man. I was surprised. Yeah, so then I was like what the, f- like, why is this guy viewing my story anyway? Yeah. So I shot him a message, and I was like, hey, like, I met you, and I just tried getting a hold. He didn't end up messaging me back, but I was just like, that's crazy. He's, he'd agree to come and fucking do Chill. That would be yeah. dope, man. Yeah, that I'm really looking cool. forward to that. That's, that'd be fucking sick. And I definitely got, like, questions about playing with Alice. Well, dude, but not only that, I want to learn about him as a person. You know what? High, I'd actually, that's a high percentage chance he would because like one thing I do know about Alice Cooper is, and it's a weird thing he likes to golf in Winnipeg yeah yeah. so I bet you like when they're because they're supposed to do a date here not too long ago but in Corona yeah. cancelled it uh, it was at the concert hall I was looking to get tickets so I could like go see him perform and then when he would come on here I'd kind of ask him about the performance and how he felt about it mm-hmm. but yeah it all got cancelled so yeah it was that's a bummer yeah. yeah but that would be fucking sweet that yeah, that would have cool. been really cool, man. Um, but yeah, we can pretty much wrap up this this episode right here. We'll start up the one with Nathan, and uh, you can just get in on it. I'll sit in the chair, and we'll do like a three-person. We'll uh, do Nathan's episode, and then kind of have like a joint thing and sure. drag it on, you know, drag it a little longer. Cool, man. So yeah, this has been the fucking Jared. The Jared episode. The J-Lo episode. Yeah, cool, dude, man. thanks for coming on. This has been fun, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, dude. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, dude, take